Today I'd like to show you the C-band dishes that I use to receive free satellite TV. These are both 10 foot C-band dishes that I've rescued from people's yards. What I did was put an ad out on Kijiji uh, looking for a C-band satellite dish like this. And I made it clear to the uh, people I got these from that I'm using them for satellite TV because I'm a hobbyist that I'm not gonna just take them and sell them for scrap metal. Usually people are more likely to give you the dish or give it to you for a good price if you explain that to them. If they think you're a scrap dealer, then they might want a lot of money for the dish or might not want to give it to you at all. And you can see that these two dishes are slightly different in appearance. The dish pans themselves look fairly similar, but you can see this one here has a single arm holding the LNB on. And that's called a button hook style LNB arm. And this one here has four uh, struts or arms that hold the LNB out in front of the dish. That seems to be a more common design at least around here and each of these are made by different manufacturers so we'll uh, take a closer look at them now this dish here with the button hook was made by a company called orbitron and they were a pretty big manufacturer of satellite dishes back in the 80s and 90s i believe and this one has a unique polar mount on it and uh, we'll take a look at that now so the way this mount works is this part down here is what sits on top of the three and a half inch outer diameter post. And then this part here is what moves the elevation up and down. And that's the adjustment bolt there for the elevation. And this part here would be what you would, uh, what the dish would pivot on if this was a motorized dish. But, uh, what I have done here is turn this into a stationary dish by utilizing this back brace and the uh, arm for the actuator over there. And I've just connected those two at a 90 degree angle with this piece of angle iron. And that allows me to move this dish to one particular satellite. Uh, right now it's on 97 West and it pretty much stays there all the time. I don't tend to move this dish much it's a little finicky because the way this dish is designed is that the mount for the satellite dish actually fits into this post here. And this, uh, this little mount here, as you can see, it's on a bit of an angle. This is Orbitron's way of setting the dish declination. They call it the spin spinclination. And to set this dish up with a motorized actuator to track the geostationary arc, you actually have to spin the dish around on this yoke here. This yoke is angled and you spin the dish around to adjust the declination angle. Declination is uh, sort of like uh, an offset angle that adjusts your dish's elevation in order for you to properly track the geostationary satellite arc. And it's especially important when you are trying to receive your far western or eastern satellites because if the declination is not set correctly then your dish will be moving on a different arc and will miss those satellites entirely. Here is a spare dish mount for this Orbitron dish and you can see here that the round mounting pole on the end here is not 90 degrees to the four mounting brackets here and that is offset on the slight angle so that you can adjust that declination angle and your declination is set according to your latitude i just kind of installed it as it was and turned it the best i could um, until i got a decent signal and left it there probably not adjusted the way it's supposed to be but since I'm not using it as a motorized dish I haven't really worried about it too much so it's set up as a stationary dish and it does a good job and the other dish I have here with these four arms or struts holding the LNB out in front is a channel master satellite dish actually 
And this one I find a lot easier to adjust and use. This is the one I normally use in my videos to uh, capture different C-band satellites. So we'll have a quick look at this one now. So you can see that this has a totally different uh, mounting ring and polar mount. There's a large round ring that bolts onto the dish segments. That keeps things nice and rigid. And it has a similar round mount here to sit on the three and a half inch post. But the elevation is adjusted much differently. There's kind of like a hinged bar here. And that is controlled by this bolt here, which you twist to either raise or lower the dish's elevation. And there are some pivot points here and here that would be used in a motorized actuator setup. And up here, this adjustment bolt is for your declination angle there. So that's a different way to get that offset to properly track the geostationary arc. But since I'm not using this as a motorized dish, I just used a piece of uh, slotted or hole punched uh, angle steel to again mount the dish at 90 degrees to the uh, mount here and I use it as a stationary dish and I find this one pretty easy to adjust. Just need a wrench to loosen the collar bolts here and a crescent wrench to adjust your elevation and I've had no trouble picking up uh, any C-band satellite that I, I can get in my area. One little trick I use is I have this uh, duct tape here with some index marks on it for the different satellites so I can kind of remember where to turn the dish to get certain satellites and then just adjust the elevation accordingly and that is pretty helpful in uh, finding most C-band satellites that I want to get. Something else that's, I guess, unconventional about my C-band dishes, I do have a safety chain on them, and they're just uh, chained up to a fence post here. And that's just something I do as a bit of a fail safe. The other reason I do that is because my dishes are not cemented into the ground. I actually use uh, four by four posts to make a timber frame for my dishes. And, uh, these posts are 10 feet long and these are eight feet wide. And they're all bolted together. And I have these pyramid mounts for my dishes, which are bolted straight through the uh, timbers. And a lot of people might think that that is maybe unsafe or strange. But uh, when I rescued these dishes, there's no way I'm able to lug back a 600 pound concrete base to bolt them to. So I came up with this solution here and a lot of people might be wondering, don't your dishes move around when the ground shifts? Do they wobble in the wind? Well, we don't tend to get really strong winds in this area and they've uh, been this way through uh, one harsh Northwestern Ontario winter and I've had no problems with them at all. They haven't moved at all. Uh, one other good thing about this setup here, believe it or not, is that I live in an area where the ground is sandy soil. Um, if you dug a hole in this backyard and filled it with water like a swimming pool, when you wake up in the morning it would be empty. This ground does not hold any water and nothing moves here. I have a large deck that is uh, just sitting on the ground. It's not attached to my house and it hasn't moved in 25 years. I have a shed back here that is only sitting on some little paving stones. Just uh, dug a couple of inches into the ground, nothing moves. So I've had no problems with my C-band dishes moving, tipping, falling, um, shifting out of place, out of alignment at all. I guess I'm lucky that way, but this is what I do. A lot of people might not agree with this, but this is how I have my C-band dishes set up and it's worked awesome. So that's what I do. And one other quick comment about the wind. 
because these are mesh dishes they don't tend to catch a tremendous amount of wind a lot of the wind does pass through the dish they don't really move around much at all even in heavy winds but we don't tend to get like super heavy winds in this area anyways so um, mesh dishes for me that's the best way to go and as far as actuators go uh, here's a couple here this one here you can see is missing the motor though I took that off usually these things are seized these ones uh, were actually moving okay and either you could wire this actuator in and use it but you have to get a dish mover for that or an older c-band receiver that could uh, power it but you can also maybe with some macgyvering um, maybe make up some kind of a yoke or something for a drill um, and you could move the dish with a power drill or even a hand crank or a wrench of some kind that's always an option if you want a dish that's a little more mobile but for me I'm fine with just having stationary dishes I don't find it to be too uh, too much work to move them anyways and the LNBs those have to be changed these are the older ones that came with the dishes originally now these would still work just to be clear but the problem with these is that you have to have some kind of a way to power this little blue thing here or this one here it's uh, black these are called servo motors and what they do is they will usually they actually use a little motor to turn that antenna from horizontal to vertical polarity so that you can receive channels on both horizontally and vertically polarized transponders the uh, new modern LNBs have built-in electronics that automatically switch between horizontal and vertical. And uh, new LNB is pretty cheap, probably 30 bucks for a, you know, a modest one. And it works just fine. That's all I have on my dishes now. But you can still use these. The problem is if you don't power the servo motor, then you're probably only going to get about half the channels on a given satellite though. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while to show you these C-band dishes of mine. And uh, I know it's unconventional the way I've got them set up. A lot of people might think it's strange or maybe not agree with it, but um, for where I live, given the weather and ground conditions, um, they haven't caused me any problems at all. I've had good performance out of them. And like I said, Living on sandy ground, nothing moves.